Hello fellow tankers, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today I bring you guys one of the most crazy games I've had in World of Tanks in a while. So today I'm in my 50TP prototype which is a Polish premium heavy tank at tier 8. We are in the tier 9 matchmaking meaning I'm a mid tier in this matchup. There is artillery in place so we have to be careful about that and on south coast the battle usually happens on the east side of the map however for whatever reason i'm not very comfortable playing out of the east side so i usually prefer going to the west side to the beach and although beach is not an area where you can normally get a lot of damage but if your east side holds for longer period of time your tanks on the beach can actually push through and get into the opposition base and there's a nice hill over there on the other side where you can climb up and potentially provide some rear shots into the opposition so i like doing that mostly in my medium tanks not really heavy tanks but in this situation with me being a mid tier i decided to do that now quick few words about 50 tp 50 tp i actually very much enjoy this tank i enjoy it a lot more than polish tech tree tanks especially at tier 8 I don't know why, it seems like the gun is a little bit better on a 50 TP. Now this tank is not crazy well armored, but you guys will see what happens in this battle at the end with respect to whether this tank can bounce shots or not. The turret is actually quite bouncy. We're talking about 210 millimeters of armor at the front. The hull, however, is not the greatest. We're looking at 170 millimeters up front. Now there's a big gaping weak spot on this tank, which is the machine gun port and usually everyone shoots there and that could be easily penetrated by any pretty much most of tier 7s with standard pen but this tank has got some mobility as you can see it moves pretty good top speed is 35 kilometers an hour it does carry 1500 hit points which is quite good now the biggest thing about this tank is the damage the alpha it can pack a big punch we're talking about 440 alpha with standard shell penetration of 218 and if you load premium shells you will get 245 millimeters of penetration now the biggest achilles heel for this tank is the reload time which is spec at about 15.7 seconds now with gun rammer and some crew skills you can bring it down a lot lower to probably mid 13s but with this tank you have to make sure that you have support if you're isolated you will get in trouble because of the long reload time but the alpha is beautiful absolutely beautiful and that's why i like this tank not only that the gun depression on this tank is quite spectacular it has 10 degrees of gun depression and with the turret armor that it has it can bounce a lot of shells if you play it properly using your hold down capabilities so in this game as you notice initially there's not much going on we're just kind of gonna try to push the beach but if our east side holds, we should be able to push through here and flank the opposition through their base. Now, these guys here are making a push. They see they're outnumbered here. So we're going to try to put a shell into the defender. Yes, we take him out of the game. And now this bad chat knows he's isolated. So he's going to try to run off. And we're going to try to aim a shot at him. See if we can put a shell into him. But he's moving quite quick. Now here, I think I scuffed this shot. Yeah, unfortunately, I scuffed this shot. I should have probably switched into the third-person mode and aim properly. But take a look at this, guys. We are, what, not even four minutes into the game, and all of our tanks that were on the east side vanished. Absolutely vanished. Whatever numbers we had there, they're all gone. And I don't know how the hell that all happened. It happens in so many games nowadays. It's not even funny. People just don't know how to play the game anymore. You basically go, you try to fight, and you can't get any damage because, you know, half of the team, or even more than half of the team is dead in like four minutes. Like seriously, I don't know what's happening. This meta is completely out of whack. So I decided to come back and defend the base because there's no one there anymore and there's no point for me pushing if the other flank is gone, so may as well. Now pay attention to this artillery on the left side, the M53. He's going to play a vital role in this game. And I'll mention him probably quite a few times in this game. So, 
you notice him just staying in that position now normally if I was already I would not be sitting on a flank that failed that basically well not failed but there's no one there so basically no one is ahead of him and he's sitting on that flank so if I was already I would already be dropping in a position that would give me opportunity to shoot at least shoot at the base right but little did I know that this guy actually knows what he's doing and actually the position he's in right now is a good position to shoot although I think it's still kind of risky because he's all exposed by himself if someone pushes down the beach there's nothing he can do he's gonna die so I told him to drop right here but he's gonna stay there for a while no problem though as long as he has shots I think that's not a problem so the whole battle is gonna happen here guys base defense we're gonna try to defend the onslaught of the reds and see if we can succeed so as you can see there's this jack tiger over there and my idea at this point was to push with my yak tiger who's still relatively not full health but he's got some health our standard b is on a sliver of health so he cannot do much he has to play it really cautious now i stopped here and hesitated because i got spotted but what i was trying to do is help with a push make a push but basically what i tried to do is disappear there because of the arty i'm worried that arty is gonna hit me so i kind of backed off you know lost my sixth sense and now i decided to move forward but now when i try to join these guys i realize that there is a tank destroyer pushing on my right hand side over here so instead of going with the yak tiger who by the way has already vanished and the standard b i decided to stay here and defend this area so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to put some shells into this at-15 at the same time our standard B also is engaging him, but little did I know that Pershing is going to be shooting and providing crossfire for the Reds, shooting from left side. Now take a look at that shot. This barely missed. I'll show you later. It barely missed. That Actually, it hit his capola. I think that was a ghost shell, actually, because in the replay when I watched it, it looked like it hit his capola. So now I'm going to be in a bad spot everyone's gonna rush me so this Ferdinand is rushing me right now he's gonna try to take me out of the game he puts a shell into me we're gonna try to face hug and hopefully use our strong turret armor to uh to bounce a shell or two from him but I am concerned about this Pershing coming from my left side at this point in time I didn't care if he does whatever he does to me he does but he gets taken out by Artie and I didn't know it at a time all I'm concerned about is this Ferdinand, and this Ferdinand is bouncing off of me like there's no tomorrow. Obviously, he doesn't know where to penetrate me. If he would be shooting in my machine gun port, he would be able to take me out in no time. But just like that, we managed to take him out of the game, and we tied this game very quickly. So now, artillery remaining, and another heavy tank on the opposing team is also a 50 TP. But I don't know where he is now. He wasn't spotted. Now all of a sudden I spot him and he's full health. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, this is not gonna end well. But we're not just gonna quit. We're gonna keep on fighting till the end. We're gonna see if we can choose some health off of this guy. So we're gonna try to side scrape here. Make sure he bounces. We hit him, we set him on fire. So great shot over here. And I was thinking to myself, well, maybe luck is on my side. He bounces his shell at the same time. So we're going to try to just keep on moving, make sure that he doesn't hit us. We hit him for 441. Now I'm a one shot to him. If he puts the next shell into me, I'm pretty sure he's going to reload before me. He's going to take me out of the game. So, but he bounces. So now I have to just line up this shot, make sure I line it properly and we take him out of the game. I was being patient there because I really didn't want to hit his gun. If you guys played this game long enough, you know that if you hit the opposition's gun, you will just draw a critical and no damage. It will block the shell. So, I survived this onslaught. I don't know how. I should have been dead already at least two times. But I managed to survive and all of a sudden, my controller disconnects. <laughs> my controller disconnects. I'm like, damn, this is one of the better games I've had in a while. It's crazy stuff going on and my batteries run out of power. So I run off, get my batteries changed. At the same time, I'm worried I'm sitting in a spot where artillery can easily hit me. But luckily, the artillery doesn't fire. Now, our artillery 
decided to go and engage the M5355 on the opposing team. I'm trying to tell him here to stop, to wait for me, because we have this game in the back. He's damage hungry right here, he wants to get his damage, but we can win this game easily if he's patient enough to wait for me, but he decided not to. Now, later on, I'll show you guys what's going on over there. It looks like they're going around in circles, right? That's what it seems like. And I'll show you exactly what happens later. Anyway, I'm rushing as fast as I can to help him. But the opposing team's artillery takes out our artillery. And at this point, I started counting the seconds. I know, because I have M53. I know how long it reloads. It reloads over 40 seconds. So I know I should be able to have two shots into this guy before he reloads. So here I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be able to take him out, but he takes me out of the game. I was like, WTF. I don't wanna swear, guys. Really don't wanna swear. I was like, what the hell just happened? And then I realized the guy must have had a smaller gun. Now, I never run a smaller gun on my M53. I always run a bigger gun. I basically skipped the smaller gun. So I didn't know that his actual reload time was 25 seconds, not 40 seconds. So I thought I played it perfectly. I thought we had this game in a bag, but it did not turn out to be the case. I was banging my head against the wall here. Can you believe it? I almost pulled this game off all on my own by defending the base. I killed the Ferdinand. I killed the 50 TP. If the RD would have waited for me, we would have killed this. We would have won this game. It would have been a hell of a, hell of a freaking clutch. But instead of it being a clutch, it turned out to be a complete foobar. Complete foobar. And when I think about how I played this game, I think that I did everything I could to guarantee the win for our team. The only thing I did not take under consideration, and who would take that under consideration, would be that the M53 is running a smaller gun. I would have never even think about that. Now, the one mistake that I did make potentially was instead of auto-aiming and firing my HE shell into the artillery's track, I could have aimed it properly into his turret or side and that way I would have taken him out of the game in one shot. But I was overconfident knowing that I'll be able to put a second shell into him before he reloads and that was my demise. Now we're gonna look at the quick highlights of the game and how do we get to that point. So our artillery played a key role. As you can see the opposing team's bat shot is basically circling our Ferdinand and our Artie is actually gonna shut him down. Should be in a split second here anytime now. There we go. So our Artie played a key role in this game taking out this bat shot. Now see what happens next. So our Ferdinand pushes to the edge and gets taken out by the opposing team's Pershing. Now let's take a look at what Pershing's view was at this point in time. So he was basically waiting here for the Ferdinand to poke out. You can see the bat shot over there, the enemy's bat shot. Gonna get taken out by our Artie. And now this Pershing is just waiting here expecting the Ferdinand to poke out and he does poke out and gets taken out just like that now let's continue with uh, with this Pershing and see what happens so he's gonna push forward to the position where he is going to flank us me and the standard B in the meantime you can see here our Yak Tiger is engaging the other team's Yak Tiger and our Yak Tiger gets taken out now we'll come back into this but Pershing is moving forward to the crossfire position and this is going to be good position for him because he will have shots at me and he will also have shots at the standard B. So I think he focuses me first. That's right, he puts a shell into me. Now he's going to switch his attention to the standard B because standard B is on the left side and you're going to see him in a second. He's going to take him out of the game. Right there, he takes him out of the game. Now take a look at this. The ghost shell, there he goes. Wow. That should have been a hit. I'm not sure why it wasn't, it should have been a hit. Anyway, let's continue. So now what's gonna happen is the Pershing's gonna wait for his Ferdinand to engage me first. 
before he engages me, which is a very, very smart play. That's exactly what he should have done. So he's going to move forward now because I'm in a little bit of a dip. I dropped behind the dip because I knew the Pershing is going to come after me. So I'm fighting the Ferdinand right here. Take a look at this. Our Arty is just going to demolish the Pershing. So he puts a shell into me and then he just gets demolished. Absolutely demolished by the Arty. So our Arty played a really key role here. No matter what happens later, guys, that was actually clutch. I mean, if he didn't make that shot, there is no way I could survive my engagement with the Ferdinand. So now let's see what happens to our Yak Tiger. Our Yak Tiger was relatively full health. I thought he should be able to take out the enemy's Yak Tiger. As you can see him here, he's rushing, but he gets absolutely taken out by the Arty. And our standard B takes out the opposing team's Yak Tiger. Now let's take a look at what our Arty has done and what happened there at the end of engagement. What was this run around the Rosie there? What were these guys doing at the end of the game? And how did that end up? So as you can see, our M53 is pushing. This is actually a nice position because he's got high ground here. So he did this pretty well. Now he spots the opposing M53. He's right ahead of him. So they're gonna exchange shots here. Both of them miss. So our RD fired first. So I figured, well, the opposing M53 fired second. So our RD should reload faster, but it would not because the opposing RD has a much faster reload, right? It's a smaller gun. So he fires again, he misses a shell on our RD. Now what our RD should have done here, he should have backed up into the hill so he can turn his gun and fire into the opposing team's M53. Instead, he was trying to block him. And that was a mistake because M53 turns very, very badly. As you can see, his turn is so wide, he cannot get his gun around and the opposing M53 just takes him out of the game. Now, in a split second here, you're gonna see me coming up but in the meantime, the opposing team's M53 is climbing up the hill. Now, this is where I'm going to catch him. I'm going to shoot his track right here. And he's just going to aim up and take me out of the game, unfortunately. Sad, sad ending, to be honest. It should have ended in my favor, but unfortunately, it is not. So, it is what it is, guys. It happens. You win some, you lose some. It is the nature of the game. Not much you can do about this. We'll get to play, fight, and live another day. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out Clone Guy 72 and Gara Dinghy. I'll leave links to their channels in the description section below. That's it for today. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, check it out.